Hey there, I'm Jesse, and you're listening to the Deep Lore Boys Podcast, where me, Matthew, and Jackson delve into the random, rare, and often ridiculous pieces of human history. It's been rated as one of the worst warships ever built. It was traveling so fast (laughs) that it no-clipped through his brain. (laughs) Nobody knows his name. Nobody knows who he is. People just call him the man of the whole. So in the uh, the late 1800s, uh, the 1870s to be specific, the, the Civil War had kind of just ended. During the Civil War, these things called ironclads arose, and it became a new thing that instead of building a ship out of wood, you could build it out of, like, metal. Whoa! It was basically, like, it, it sounds dumb, but for the time, this was groundbreaking. It was revolutionary. Metal ships. Russia decided that they wanted to build some metal warships as well. So they built this ship called the Novgorod. And it looks epic. The The best way that I can describe it is that it looks like a, a smoke detector with cannons on top. Is basically oh my the gosh, best way that that's I can true. It. I was going to say it looks like the Millennium Falcon of the sea. It it's does, just this yeah. big floating circle with like stuff on top. It, the ship only has two cannons on it. And they're both front facing. Or I should say front facing because there isn't exactly a front of this ship. It's more right, just it's, like, it's a circle. It's it's been rated as one of the worst warships ever built. Yeah, it does not look like it would hold up well. I'm imagining the, the sea would probably overtake it before a ship would. Oh my gosh, there's a picture of it. That thing does not ride high in the water. <laughs> no, it does. It not. is. Oh no. no. Yeah, that's what, what I'm saying, dude. If you get caught in a storm with this thing, you're done. So the the overall concept of this ship, from what I was able to read, was that if you were to widen the beam of it, of a normal ship, it could carry more armor. So I guess they thought by making it like a circle disc shape, it would have been able to be more reinforced and harder to hit. But at the what? same time, I think it was also very hard to steer. So I don't really yeah, know. It's just a big of circle in the water. Like a single wave is going to turn it. Also, was their logic just like, guys, if we make the ship bigger, we can put more armor on it? Yes. Is it armored, though? Is it armored? Because, See, like, it looks you like shoot the... this thing twice and it's going down. Like, it is right. riding <laughs> at the edge of the water. So I think that its hull was armored, but that being said, the hull was not above water, so it no, doesn't really yeah. have a point there. Like the whole top of the ship is exposed. Thing is, you have to realize at this point in time, Gatling guns were invented. So you put one of those on the top of the ship, and you could you put one of those on the top of the Novgorod, and they can just whip <laughs> around at any angle. They're not going to hit anything. That is the one advantage of the Novgorod is that they're never pointing the wrong way. <laughs> they, yeah, they're always they kind of just always so there. So I, I thought about this and I was like, oh, like that is an advantage. But technically they are because I think the cannons only faced one direction. That what? is Yeah. All of both of the cannons don't swivel. They only face what? forward. They threw away the ship's greatest advantage. Yeah. It the ship is very much designed to have a front and a back because oh, all of the gosh. propellers are on one side. Like the idea of having this ship was just botched. I think they should have put propellers uh, like completely lining the entire outside so that at any given moment they could go in any direction they wanted. That'd be great. To, like, it, this this actually seems like a bad piggy's boat of some Dude, kind. Dude, it seems it like does. a bad piggy's invention. The, the best thing that I could think is if they put cannons on all the sides of it and then they just spun the thing around and just fired off all the cannons. Like they could put that in like the middle. Like a Beyblade? Dude, basically, Yo, yeah. can you imagine if they put like sharp edges on it oh. and they built a bunch of Beyblade? Oh, dude, they <laughs> Beyblade could like strap warships. the crew in. The crew would have like seat belts and they just let it rip, dude. They just go. One man wrote, who I guess his name was Reed. He wrote... The circular form is so extremely favorable to this kind of hardiness that the Novgorod can be easily revolved on her center at a speed which quickly makes one giddy. Giddy. So I guess when it like when it giddy. turned, apparently it made people giddy. That's that's maybe one well, what thing it, that's what it, maybe it means it made people gritty. I think it that's made what people on about. board do the gritty. He made them do the gritty, dude. They just they couldn't the... stop once that ship starts turning. Tell you what, the gritty starts churning. That's what I'm saying, dude. 
I mean, it, I would be rather quite uh, giddy watching a ship turn that fast, or being on a ship turning that fast. But apparently the pitch of the ship was so bad that you couldn't even load the guns most of the time. What? So, um, it so, okay, it sounds to me like the crew just needs to get good. Okay, <laughs> yeah, they're complaining they they're seasick and they can't load the cannons. Like, I'm sorry? <laughs> like, like, get good. Get good? Like, there's nothing wrong with being giddy when the ship turns fast. Like, that's that's a plus, but... But you gotta be able to load good. the cannons. This thing only has two yeah. guns. It has two guns. You have to be able to God's load them. Sake. Honestly, they shouldn't have sold this for scrap. This should have been used as an amusement park ride. Yeah. Oh, that would have been sweet. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So if you had one of these things, and you could just trip it out any way you wanted to, what would you add to your own Novgorod to make it the most lethal battle machine on the seas? I would angle the propellers... I'd put them all around the ship and angle them so that when I turned them on, the ship would just spin rapidly. And then I'd put, like, saw blades on it. You could steer it into an enemy ship <laughs> yes. and, like, slice it up. It's like that that thing in Battleship. Oh, That's yeah! A, oh, dude. What if you built it with, like, one of those Davy Crockett nuke launchers on it? Yes! And it would just, like, they would be like, oh, no, dude, they're not gonna kill us with that. And then it just launches a... If you have a miniature nuke <laughs> nuclear warhead. warfare in ship combat and naval combat, there, there's nothing to do. <laughs> there is no fun <laughs> in using nuclear warheads in naval combat. No, it just robs <laughs> just like, you of all hey guys, the joy. Hey guys, the ship, <laughs> let's get them. <laughs> just, like, just get decimated There's instantly. nothing left. So the first thing that I that I would recommend with the ship is that they should have built up the deck a little bit higher. More of had like a bit of like a cylinder going on. I love how you're actually trying to, trying to, to come up thing. with a good design. So <laughs> They're just like, doesn't... no, giddy Beyblade ship. And you're like, no, actually, <laughs> what if we fixed the deck? You know, what like... if we... Dude, the thing is, I, the, thing, the ship is so close to the water that like anytime it dips down at all, your feet are immediately getting wet. And I'm going to say like your shoes are soaked. Like the, the crew members of the ship could not have had dry socks at all. So if you had built that up a little <laughs> bit higher and then had like a rotating piece of like the cannon. They could put a flamethrower on this thing though. It would burn itself <laughs> That'd be down. Awesome. Here's here's what I would do. This, this is what I think the ship needs. All right. The same shape and whatnot. Exact same shape. However, as much armor as it has on the bottom, it has like double that on the top. Just make it a giant indestructible circle. Oh yeah. There. But then at the very middle on the top. You have a super tough hatch that just opens every couple of minutes and launches a missile out and then closes. So that'd be amazing. What if we put a helicopter blades? <laughs> so it made it like a Beyblade, right? <laughs> right. Oh my god! But if it spins Beyblade fast, shit, but it, it spins off. really fast and starts <laughs> flying. Yes. Oh. What, dude? No. Are you acquainted with this guy? Oh, is this the guy who stuck his head in a particle accelerator? Yes. Oh, yeah, I know this guy. Anatoly Bogorsky was a uh, particle physicist who was working on the largest particle accelerator in the Soviet Union called the U-70 Synchrotron. It actually is from Transformers or something. It's beautiful. And what does a particle accelerator actually do? Because I'm so, not even um, super acquainted with how they work. They're some of the coolest things we've ever built. What you do with a particle accelerator, the reason that we have them, a lot of people are like, oh, well, what's the purpose of making something go really fast? Like, that's okay. So if you make something go really, really fast and then make something else go really, really fast the other way and make them hit each other, they blow up. And um, yep. you generate a new element sometimes. It depends on how you do it. But you can slap two atoms together and boom, it invents a new element. And that's how you get those goofy man-made synthetic elements. But Anatoly Bogorsky was working on the particle accelerator and the doors did not lock. For some reason, they were like, uh, should we lock it? No, no, actually, the lock's not working. That's OK. We'll just leave it. And when the particle accelerator is running, there's supposed to be a little red light above the door to signify, you know, don't go in. The red light burned out that day. 
the same day they forgot to lock the door. So poor Anatoly Bogorsky had no clue oh that this thing was running. He was walking into the perfect storm. He waltzed on in there, looked over, and saw what he described as a flash brighter than a thousand suns, and then proceeded to walk away. It didn't hurt at all. He just had something speed through his brain, and he received <laughs> a dose of... Of 200 to 300,000 rentgens. That's, you know, the measure of radiation that we use. So 100,000 rentgens will cause almost immediate unconsciousness and you die within an hour. And he got triple that through his head. Blasting through his brain So how did he once. live through that? So here's the cool thing. It was traveling so fast oh, that it no. no clipped through his brain <laughs> and skipped his brain. So he and was so fine. Basically, he was fine. It zipped through, straight through his head, and he was like, huh, well, that was weird, and then walked away. Yeah, it says he understood the severity of what had happened, but continued working on the malfunctioning yeah. equipment and initially opted he not didn't to tell, tell anyone. anybody what yeah. happened, and then went home, carried out his day, went to bed, got up the next morning, and his face was completely swelled up to the point you couldn't, like, recognize it, and he was like, oh... I guess that's a problem. So he showed up to work and they were like, dude, what happened? And he's like, yeah, you know that particle accelerator downstairs? You know, the U-70 synchrotron? Yeah, I kind of, you know, put my head in there. My bad, you know? And they were like, uh, Bogorski, my man. Uh, dude, uh, <laughs> call in sick or something. Um, bro. Like, so, yeah, uh, eventually, you know, over a few days, yeah, his face had swollen to the point. I'm not even sure if I want to go into all of it. He was all messed up. It was bad. He was not doing good at all. You know how there's a joke that, like, guys refuse to go to the doctor and their wives have to, like, drag them there, even though, like, their oh, arm yeah. can be falling off and be like, no, yeah, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. This man... He took this to another level. He took this to a whole new level. He actually completely lost hearing in his left ear, and uh, the left half of his face was paralyzed yeah but he did not seem to he just kept going he kept he kept going along. he tanked through it just to give you uh, a, a little spoiler here uh this story has a happy ending because this dude is still yeah. alive as of 2022 when we're recording this he is still he is still alive and he he survived he completed his phd and he continued working as a particle physicist so he didn't let this stop him he is one of the most overpowered people ever Oh, yeah. He did suffer from some seizures, though, or partial yeah, seizures? Yeah, it seizures. definitely did have an effect on his health. To say that he was just fine <laughs> and just nothing happened is... Oh, no, yeah. You know, By fine it, and nothing happened, we mean, you know, compared to most you know, people, they get a dose to, of 300,000... Yeah. Compared to most people would have digits. dropped to zero hit points and failed all three of their death-saving throws. Oh, yeah. Um, he did not. He did not even he pass out. He kept going. He kept on tanking through it. Is there any it. other event in history of this happening to anybody else? Yes, but they don't have endings like this one. Oh. They d oh. <laughs> so oh. There's many stories I can tell, but they're not stories that you want to hear or look at. But basically, um, long story short, Anatoly Bogorsky, he stuck his head in a particle accelerator. He survived, and now he's married and has a kid. So there's your happy ending. It's yeah. actually really nice. Like, he tanked through this. He's probably one of the coolest people alive today. I mean, he's had more radiation go through him than probably anybody. Anybody That's alive. That's true. He's yeah, had more alive. radiation anybody go alive. through him he... than stinking Bruce Banner, dude. He... Yeah, like, he knows what's up. I, yeah, maybe he does have, like, extremo power. If anybody was to have, like, some dumb Marvel powers, it would be this guy. It'd be this guy, Anatoly. Yeah. He is 80 right now, and I'm not sure what he's looking like, but we we have not disproven the idea that he could be immortal now because of mm. this. I mean, technically not, no. No, I mean, any one of us could be immortal, I guess, as long as we haven't died. Yeah, I mean, you never know. The man of the hole. He's he's a dude who lives in the Amazon rainforest, and he's the last surviving member of his tribe, which is honestly tragic. That's kind of that's wrong. Sad. It is. It's sad. 
nobody remembers what his tribe was called and nobody can speak his language. And, and nobody knows his name. Nobody knows who he is. People just call him the man of the hole. Yeah, he lives in houses and then digs a very deep hole in them. And then leaves. And then leaves. He digs their narrow holes that are always over six feet deep. And it's believed that the holes are used for him to trap animals, or maybe he likes to hide in them. We're not really sure. It's also suggested that maybe they have some kind of spiritual significance to his old tribe. Nobody knows. They just, like, find homes that this guy has lived in, and there's always a six-foot-deep hole in each one for some reason. I really can't argue with that. Yeah, so his tribe originally lived in the Amazon rainforest there in Brazil. And I don't think anybody knows exactly what happened to his tribe because they, they don't know even what they were called and don't know the language, but they were probably killed in a number of clashes with ranchers and loggers in the 1980s and 1990s. So this is yeah. pretty recent stuff. This wasn't like way back when. That's actually terrible. I didn't it think awful. about that It is awful, yeah. So literally... These are ranchers and loggers that were cutting down trees and trying... Because ranchers, they need fields and stuff to raise things like cattle. And so they're just cutting down the forests and then apparently literally killing the tribes in them. Yeah. And so now the man of the whole remains. So in 2007, the Brazilian government, they realized that this guy was still there and they declared a 31 square mile area around him be off limits to trespassing, development, ranching, logging, all of it. So they gave him his own reserve. Apparently, the man of the hole was attacked, presumably by some of the people that want to cut down the forest and turn it into a ranch, I assume. What other reason do you have to go and attack this poor man in the woods? Uh, but he he allegedly survived. Uh, I won't say allegedly. He did survive because he was later sighted. And that is just awesome to me. The fact that like 30, uh, not 30, about 20 years after this, there's still scumbags trying to kill this guy and get him off the land so that they can take it over. And he survives. He manages to like fight him off. There needs to be a movie. What about this man? Like already the loggers and ranchers that killed the tribe already, like, They wanted to cut the forest down for a reason. It was a garbage reason. But the people that went to go shoot him did. What about that? What do you do? You (laughs) kill him and you're like, yeah, got him. Like, (laughs) what? (laughs) What? I assume. (laughs) Yeah, were they doing it just for like the, to say they did it? The clout. They were just like, oh my gosh, we killed Ninja. Guys, we got him. I would assume that they wanted to kill him so that the Brazilian government would take down the uh, the 31 square mile area that is protected. I I assume it's so that they could get that because once this guy dies, I would think that it's going to be essentially free real estate uh, at that point. I would I would think they would. Is he still alive today? Uh, It's believed he is. I believe so. Yeah. The last we saw him was in 2018 and he was in good health. So this is just a little fun and also kind of dark detail that I I really like about him. It just makes him that much kind of cooler to me. So the reason we think he was attacked by gunmen in 2009 is because, you know, they, they found weapons and empty shells and like all the signs of, of a struggle. And there was definitely an attack, but they never found the guys that did it. Like, it wasn't like they made an arrest and they confessed, oh, yeah, we went and attacked the the man of the hole. Oh, gosh darn it, he's just too fast. He got the better of us. That didn't happen. They just found evidence of an attack. So that means that maybe, maybe those guys got away okay and they're out in society somewhere. Or they did not survive the man of the hole. He had, like, the (laughs) pent-up rage of his people. I would... And just took them out. Love to think that, yeah, they just pulled up there and he was like, nope, done this before and just went yeah. and just slaughtered them. That would have been karma right there. That would have been, honestly, rather therapeutic, I'd say. Like, Yeah, a little bit. That's I'd give it to him. So this guy, I, as far as I know, to this day, he is going around building homes and digging holes. And it seems, I'm not sure if he's like kind of nomadic in a way where he's moving around his territory because it says that you know, homes that they found that he lived in, each home that he's abandoned, they they have these holes in them. So I'm not sure if that means he, like, keeps moving or what. The most amount of, like, contact we get with him, he, we've had no direct contact with him, but it seems that he is well aware that people outside of his area monitor him. 
and people occasionally leave gifts of tools and seeds for him and he's cool with that there's like teams of people that go through the area and he will actually signal to them where pitfalls and stuff and traps that he's made are oh. so they don't fall in there. So he seems so he hasn't, he seems even, held, what he a hasn't even held a grudge. Like, yeah, he doesn't seem to no. hold a grudge at all. Wow. That's what I like is that there's, there's way too many, uh, you know, classic cases of like, the rest of humanity is awful. They burned down my village and now I hate everybody. But this guy, he seems to understand like, no, they're still still good people. In this case, this man has every right to despise anybody he meets. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He is in full, he is in the full right for that. Like, But he has no idea what really goes on outside of his area. Like, not too much. Like, Oh, no. He doesn't even speak any languages we know of. There's no, he, yeah, like, he doesn't know anything. There's no way he can contact us. Like, he doesn't speak any of our languages. But I don't think he really cares too much, he seems. Maybe he does. I really can't speak for him. It definitely is going to do things to you to be alone like that for that long. But I do think we should leave him alone unless he chooses to enter society, which if I were him, I would not. So. <laughs> Dude, you don't you don't want to know what's going on on Twitter. It's just this is a you, mess. Yeah. Th- stay away from Twitter. If, if man of the whole ever got a Twitter, oh, I wonder what he'd say. That'd be terrible. I, I wonder what his first tweet would be. <laughs> All right. Well, what would he what would he do? Like, I came out of the jungle for this. I <laughs> go back to jungle. I love this picture of him and Matthew. You can you can stick this in the video version of the podcast if oh, you yeah. want. I believe it's a picture of him, but it's just I think it perfectly sums him up. Yeah, he hitting him with the Dwayne Johnson eyebrow raise. He looks thoroughly confused. And he does. No, yeah. that's the thing. He doesn't look confused. Not really he confused. Looks he looks like more he knows like... what's going on, and he's wondering what you're doing. Yeah, he's wondering, do you know what's going on? <laughs> that is more that's so. What the face is. <laughs> he's like, yeah. do you know where you are? <laughs> yeah, do you know? So is this, this yeah. a picture of him, with? and that's also a picture of him? Yeah, so okay. th- there's several images of him. Dude, what, what does he have on his head? It's like a, yo, that's not just his hair. It's like a hat. Oh, head. you're right. He like does have like, a hat. It's like a turban, kind of. That is awesome, dude. Whatever dude. that is, that should be in style more. This man's dripped out. There was a video of him released in 2018 to kind of raise awareness of, you know, the threats to uncontacted peoples in Brazil and whatnot. And yeah. just to, I guess, get the story out. So there is like a one little picture or video of him, but I, I don't think there's really much on him. You're not going to find like selfies of him and people standing there shaking his hand or anything. They kind of just leave him alone. And I, I honestly think we should. Uh, yeah, it's honestly, I would. believed that the man of the whole is now in his 50s and in good health. So I hope that he lives out the rest of his years in peace there and doesn't have to worry about any psychopath ranchers and lumberjacks coming in and trying to take his home. Hi again, it's Jesse. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Deep Lore Boys podcast. You can find more episodes of our show on YouTube and Spotify, which we encourage you to share with your friends so we can grow the podcast. And drop a comment down below if you're feeling extra generous. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope your day is nothing short of interesting. Take care. I'm going to go post that one on Twitter.com.